Alright guys, just going to uh Fa'anga and um, show you guys uh, a bit about that, a bit of information about that and just uh, see the views over there. So hopefully you enjoy this. Alright guys, bye for now. That's uh, Kalau, that's an island just off of Ewa and uh, no one lives there, it's uh, they've only got, they probably got chickens on there and just seafood around it but no, nothing on there really, it'd be nice if uh, someone chucked some pigs on there but yeah, uh, beautiful sight. Hey there guys, we are just in Lakfa'anga right now and this is what you call, uh, this is basically coral rock up here and uh, that's pretty cool but what's even better is this cliff site right here pretty much right on the edge here This is the south side of the island. Yeah. Here we go. Beautiful. It's about, what's the time? Just five to four in the afternoon now. Beautiful sight. And it's called Lakufa'anga. Just got a truck up there. They've got a few Palangus or overseas tourists that have come, come over and uh, they're just over there sightseeing. But yeah, beautiful sight. There's a story to this end of the island too. So there they go. So it's just rock, a cliff. So this is probably the third layer. Then there's another layer that goes higher than that on the other side. But yeah, beautiful. On that side, um, there's the seabirds, black seabirds that come in tuna season. And in tuna season, at night time, they'll go, they'll, they'll cry out the, the cry of the, the birds, and the birds come, come over at night. They got big uh, bamboo sticks. As they come through, they'll hit them with the bamboo sticks and they can, they catch them. And um, they'll, sometimes they'll catch up to 80 birds a night. But yeah, not many people do it, but I've seen, seen them do it. And um, I came here one night because uh, uh, they walked all the way from here to my house. It's a long walk because their car got broken down. So I was able to come back and uh, start the car. They had a flat battery. But yeah. All right, guys, we're just going to go to Rianga Huo on that side. I'm just going to drive there. 
um, there's a, a vehicle access going through we'll see that sign there and then we'll go in all right guys bye for now Alright guys, just uh, when you come to Latvang and here in Ewa, just be careful with the children coming to the ledge, get the children there, because this is um, just grass, and depending what kind of footwear you have, you can just slide off, slide down, a little bit of a lip on the edge where the rock is, but um, yeah, better safe than sorry, eh? So uh, keep away from the ledge, better that way. Look from here, you can see everything from here. Um, of course, you're gonna have um, people that are very comfortable with heights and they'll probably just go right to the edge. Quite safe if you're comfortable with that. Uh, but if you trip, you're gone. So just be careful, eh? Just be careful. So there's no rails or anything along this side of the island. Um, and there's a very good, a big concern with um, visitors coming here. Uh, with safety wise, but otherwise beautiful beautiful um, views beautiful sights um, We're going to the um, and that's uh, Meaning uh, spearing a hoe into the ground as like Mao and what they say is Mao speed a walk a wow actually um, the stick that you peel the coconut with and um, he threw it from one side of the island to the other and it stuck there and it hit the rock went straight through made a big archway so that's what they say of course it's not true but yeah let's go see that next day all right bye for now hey guys one thing i forgot to mention that uh, all around here there's just cows and horses all around here the, the horses are pretty much wild. No one gives them water or anything like that. And um, they fend for themselves over here. There's uh, a couple of horses over there. And this goes a fair way. All the way over there. So they've got a lot of area to actually roam around. And uh, so yeah. They're pretty much wild horses. They just keep multiplying on this side of the island. Uh, the only place in Tonga you, that you will, you will have wild horses. They are some ones, but uh, they've just left their horses and cows over here and they've just multiplied and they don't even look after them. So, yeah. Alright guys, take it easy. The horses have actually trodden all that down. Probably water when it rains, it'll be heavy. They start stomping their hooves in there and they'll gather a bit of water. This is called the rock garden where you got all the coral rock forming.
So all in this bush and everything over here is wild chickens everywhere. Um, over there on the cliff. Mm. Over here um, it's best to have a four-wheel drive to be able to get around places especially when it, um, it rains. It gets quite muddy. Especially with a bit of clearance underneath the vehicle. There's quite a few holes here and there. As you can see, I'm getting around rocks and whatnot. So we'll go in front of this sign over here and it's got the explanation of what this area is. So the name of it, Lakfa Anga. Uh, this is the story of a. Uh, hang on, turn the vehicle off so you can hear me properly. Of famine. There was a family of seven that lived during the time of the famine, and this was their home. As other sources of food ran out, the only food they had left was fa. Then there's a tree around here that we don't eat right now the pandanus fruit. One day, the parents noticed that they were running low on food, the pandanus fruits, and their family would not survive much longer. Out of their love, their parents decided to throw themselves off the cliff, sacrificing themselves. They then transformed into turtles. The two turtles would then visit the shore frequently to check on their children. After a while, the fire ran out completely and the children also began to starve. They then decided to throw themselves off the cliff so they could not they could be reunited with their parents. It was later that the locals noticed that then that when they would recite a chant over the cliff and throw some far down into the ocean, seven turtles can be seen shown up to eat them. The chant is as follows. You see them below. And um, to be honest um, on the edge of the cliff on a really nice day, you can see turtles in the water now and again. But um, hey, I've I think it's just uh, uh, you can you can see it as you as you will. But um, you know, what I believe is just turtles just coming through. All right, guys. Alright guys, we're at uh, Ringanghuo, um, well, the climb to it, and uh, I'll take a few videos, bits and pieces up, up, the, up the trail, uh, but yeah, everything's not too overgrown, so it's good. Uh, sometimes, in the past, when I've come here, everything's overgrown and you can't find your way, but now, a lot more tourists are coming through, and you can clearly see the way there, um, but... Another thing, safety, safety. Always, always make sure you got the right foot gear uh, for the walk. And also, make sure they're not too slippery underneath. Because when it gets a little bit rainy, uh, when it rains a little bit, it gets a little bit muddy, it gets a little bit slippery. So just be careful of that. Um, also, 
for trekking on an island here, use trekking shoes or not your best shoes, right? Uh, something that's very comfortable and um, something you can wear for a long time because there's a lot of walking that you'll be doing. Um, but yeah, all right, guys, next slide. Alright guys, bit of a trail, as you can see, oops, the roots on the trees help because they act like steps when it's muddy here, yeah they help a lot. As you can see, sort of like you would think the pathway is there, but it's there, alright. People sometimes use that, sometimes use that. Around the corner, keeps going up. And the corner opens up a bit from coming in from there. Go across there. This is a lot better than before. And you can see that's where the big hole is down there. Be careful, just slip here, where you go down there, a big slide. It's good they got roots growing here so you can get your footing in, or it could be a trip as it's one or the other. <laughs> go underneath the tree. All right, guys. That's what I'm looking at.
the Ahu. As you can see, down there, Maui for spear, spear or uh, um, what do you call it? A coconut husker. Woo. Imagine the size of that guy compared to this guy. Nah. <laughs> but anyway, so we've made it here. Beautiful spot out in the middle of nowhere and uh, very very happy to be here this afternoon and uh, yeah so you gotta come here to be able to um, see and feel what you feel when you come here oh oh there's people I think people could be anything else but yeah so all right guys um Tourists uh, come here all the time now, and we're happy that um, this platform is redone, so it's safe to come here. Uh, people do walk down on the ledge down here, take uh, a few photos and that, but just be careful as when you come through here. All right, guys, bye for now. As you can see, there's someone on the other side there. <laughs> yeah. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed that video, uh, that bit of a tour, not far from here, from my house. My house is pretty much the last place, there is a little place that is next to the, uh, close to there, but uh, it's, I think it's a, just a fellow that lives on his own over there, uh, it's built a little hut there, but um, otherwise I'm the next person closest to that area where the Anga Hua is, and like for Anga, so... If you break down, there's no phone service out that way to walk all the way, or hopefully there's someone on the road there to pick you up to bring you back. There is a lot of tourists that walk it um, and bike it all the way there. It's not too bad, and um, so you probably enjoy it. But yeah, um, hopefully you've enjoyed that. Uh, and um, that's the first video I've done really with something like that. So if you like it, Click that like button, subscribe, and uh, yeah, and share if you can or if you want to. All right, guys. God bless. Take care. Bye for now.